Hey guys, today I'm here in New Orleans in the French Quarter, and I'm proud to announce that yours truly did receive the Agent of the Year Award from Security National Life. That's right, the third year in a row. In this video, we're gonna go over the new application that's just being released here for 2018, and I'm gonna give you a lot of suggestions and tips on how to get your clients approved as applied for with this new application and the old application. Um, some of the states like Florida and California are still going to be using the old application. So we're going to cover all that stuff in a webinar format coming up after this. My name is Douglas Massey and I'm going to ask that you push the like button as this is a great way to let us know that you're actually watching our videos and enjoying them. Now, if you're a new agent in need of training, we suggest that you subscribe to our channel as we do put out a lot of true training videos on a regular basis, just like this one. To be notified each time we put out a video, smash on that little bell looking thing that's right next to the subscribe button. First, we're gonna do a quick review of the Simple Security Plan, which is the primary product of Security National Life Insurance Company. Once I do the review, we're gonna play out a product training webinar straight from Security National Life. So if you've just recently been appointed by Security National Life or you're waiting on the appointment, you can get the product training right here. Just an FYI, you can also contact me direct for the contract for this product. Email me at doug at ufesonline.com. By contracting through RIMO, United Final Expense Services, you'll have access to some of the strongest and most affordable lead programs in the industry, along with our intensive online final expense sales training platform. You can't get our training or lead programs by contracting direct to Security National Life, but the best news is that I can actually give you the same commission levels that you can get direct from them. That makes it a win-win for you, the agent. So let's get into this video. The Security National Life Simple Security Plan has preferred rates, standard rates, and return of premium rates. They insure folks from 40 to 90 years old. Yeah, this is the only final expense product that can insure a 90 year old. They also take debit cards, direct express cards, and credit cards too. Only a couple other carriers will do this. Expect to charge your client a few dollars extra when using debit or direct express cards. Security National Life has an e-app or web application. This product is not to be sold over the phone, so you need to be with your client face to face. You must have internet access, so be sure to use an iPad or your tablet that's connected to your cell phone through the hotspot. The benefit of using the web application is that it will, one, eliminate you from making mistakes, and two, your client is actually approved right on the spot. Did you hear that? You will be able to know if your client is approved as applied for before you even leave their house. This is extremely important for new agents as the web application makes the sale dummy proof. That means no going back and forth for an amendment or no beginner mistakes. This next feature is probably the most important thing about this product and makes it a game changer in our industry. Security National Life does true social security billing. Now, if you're thinking that all the carriers draft on the day the client gets their social security money, so this really isn't a big deal, what are you talking about, Doug? No, you're wrong. Let me explain. You see, if the client gets their social security monies on the third of each month, for example, sometimes the third will fall on a weekend, a Saturday, or a Sunday, or even a holiday when the banks are closed. When this happens, the client actually gets their social security money on the Friday before the third. Most of the other companies will wait until Monday or after the holiday to draft the payment. By waiting until Monday or after the holiday, they get more insufficient funds. Remember, our clients live on a fixed income and will drain their checking account or direct express card the day that they get their monies. Security National Life isn't gonna wait until Monday to take the payment like the other insurance companies. 
they're gonna draft on that Friday when the client actually gets their social security money placed on their card or in their checking or savings account. When Security National Life started doing this, we instantly had better client retention and are now chasing a lot fewer people for payments. More clients are staying on the books longer and fewer clients are having payment issues. This is the best thing since sliced bread. The application is only four pages long and requires two signatures. Their preferred rates are often in the top 10 of all final expense products. Here's another game changer. Security National Life does not do an MIB like the other carriers. All they do is pull a prescription medication check and they do the underwriting based on that along with the answers to the questions. Their bill chart is very competitive. They don't care about people with depression or bipolar and have standard rates for insulin diabetics. Security National Life has a two year return of premium for people with serious health problems. It's basically a graded product, but it's priced in the top three of all carriers. You can write someone on oxygen or with major heart problems like congestive heart failure, people with complications of diabetes, Parkinson's disease, dementia, and even folks in a wheelchair. In most cases, no other insurance agent will be able to come in behind you and give your client a better deal on their whole life insurance. You see, these health conditions are a knockout with most final expense carriers. Security National Life will not only insure them, but will give them some of the best rates in the industry. All of this is why I lead with their product and have written more Security National Life policies than any other agent in the country. With the Security National Life Simple Security Plan, most applications are approved within 24 hours. Unlike most final expense carriers, if there is an issue or if you want information on an application, you can easily get a hold of an underwriter or someone on their new business team for help. The employees there are super polite and super friendly and very helpful. If you're with a prospect and you need help with an underwriting assessment, you can quickly and easily get an underwriter on the phone. Real quick, before we share the Security National Life training webinar, feel free to email me at doug at ufesonline.com for the Security National Life contract. Also, if you're interested in access to our online final expense sales training platform, along with some of the highest commission levels in the industry and affordable lead programs, shoot me an email at that same address. Doug at ufesonline.com. Now go ahead and check out this training webinar and then go out and do something really good for your prospects today. Happy hunting, guys. Point of sale phone interview required. Just a simple two page application uh, with decisions typically in 24 to 48 hours. Uh, if you submit it to us by 10 30 a.m. Mountain Time, so make your adjustment due to your time zone, but 10 30 a.m. Mountain Time is our cutoff. If we have it by then, we will process this the same day. If we receive it after 10.30 a.m. Mountain Time, we will process it the following day. We have the Wednesday drafting feature for the Social Security benefits. This benefit is very underutilized. Uh, this probably half to upwards of two thirds, maybe even more in some cases, of your applications should be placed on the second, third, or fourth Wednesday. Uh, if this is something that you understand and, and utilize, thank you. It, it will help your business. If you don't understand it or have some questions about it or how to use it, how to set it up on our app, uh, please get with your manager and we'll, we'll be happy to explain the details of that. Pricing, we have great rates. I'll go head to head with anybody. May not always be the best, but we're gonna be right there with them. And then great customer service. I love that about our company. Uh, you, can pick up the phone and you can get a hold of someone very quickly they're going to be courteous and they're going to help you out and if they can't help you they're going to say so and and and, and get you to someone that can so our simple security plan it is for ages 40 to 90 and that is current age so if you're seeing someone today that's let's keep it simple age 60 their birthday is next week but they're not going to draft until so the first or second week of February, you can use today's age. So it's the date of the application is what we go off of as current age. Maximum face amount of 35,000. 
we do reduce it to a max of 25 for our standard and modified plans. Benefits, very competitive. We have competitive rates, competitive underwriting, and the web app is available on this product. We added two riders the first of the year, accidental death benefit rider and a child rider. I'm gonna go into more details on those in just a little bit. So here's a chart that is in our rate book. And if you haven't ordered uh, new supplies since the first year, I would recommend you do so. We have a new rate book uh, with more details in it. It has all of our products in one rate book. We've also updated our medication list. It's very detailed list, and again, it it's, has all products in one book for us. So everything is in alphabetical order on that list, so please order those through our agent website or, or get some help from our managers. But the simple security plan, you know, it's the three classes at the top, preferred, standard, and modified. Uh, modified is what we used to call graded. In all states now, that modified is a return of premium plus 10% for two years. So after two years, full benefit on that. And again, that's all states. Uh, we'll jump back to the standard. As far as an underwriting standpoint, how you tell the difference is, standard is only and only for our insulin dependent diabetics without any health issues. If they have a health issue or concern on top of being insulin, then it's likely they may be modified. So if they have a heart condition on top of being insulin, if they're COPD on top of insulin, that's going to push it to graded. Uh, now, if they're just, if, if they're not taking insulin, that means they're either going to be preferred for the healthier individuals or they're going to be modified for the individuals who've had some pretty serious health issues within the last two years. So that's a good way to think of it. Start with standard insulin dependent diabetics only. Everyone else will either be preferred or modified based on their health. Uh, second line premiums, level and payable to age 100. People are living longer, and I will tell you there are a handful of companies out there that will, people will pay premiums to 121. So if someone lives to be 103, 104, 105, they could pay substantially higher premiums in that case. Minimum face amount on a simple security plan is 2,500. Maximum face amount is based on age. So between 40 and 75 years of age, we can go to 35,000. Between 76 and 80, 15,000, this is on our preferred plan. And then age 81 to 90, we can go to 10,000. Standard, standard plan in the middle column, at maximum face amount is 25,000 for ages 40 to 75. And then it's the same for 76 to 80 and 81 to 90. And that's the same for our modified as well. Age limits, preferred and standard, we can go age 40 to 90. Again, age at last birthday or current age, however you want to word that. Modified, we can go from ages 40 to 85. So we reduce it down to 80, 85 instead of 90 on our modified plan. We have both tobacco and non-tobacco classes. So make sure you're quoting the right rate. Make sure you're getting the correct information and ask that tobacco question. We don't have any included additional benefits on our preferred or standard class. Now on our modified plans, in the first two years, there's an automatic accidental uh, rider or benefit that is included. So if someone chooses $10,000 and they have to be on a modified plan due to health, that means if they pass away due to, due to an accident in the first 10 years, they're going, the beneficiary will receive $10,000. That's, that's an included benefit, no extra charge on that. Now we also have an accidental rider that just came out February 1st that you can add on top of that. Uh, so you can go up to double indemnity on the accidental rider, and we also have a dependent child rider. I'm gonna go into more those in just a second, more detail. Accidental death benefit rider, which is abbreviated ADB. On our preferred and standard class, it provides accidental death benefit plus the face amount from day one. On the modified plan, years one and two, accidental death benefit plus the current death benefit. Year three is the accidental death benefit plus face. 
So what that says in a nutshell, it's really on all three of those plans, it's whatever the face is plus the accidental rider on top of it. Premiums, uh, see the chart on page 23 in our rate book. Uh, very, very affordable. We're talking a dollar or two in, in, in most cases uh, per month. Minimum face amount is 2,500. The maximum on the rider is the death benefit of the base policy. So if someone chooses a $10,000 base policy, the max death benefit rider they can add is 10,000. If they choose $25,000 base policy, they can add a $25,000 accidental rider. Uh, age limits are the same as the policy. This rider does need to be added at the time of application. We cannot add it a month or a year or five years down the road. It needs to be included in the initial policy, in the initial application. Expiration of the rider, it, exp it expires upon termination of base policy. This is a big advantage that we have compared to most others. Most others will expire at some age. Uh, most of them I've seen is somewhere around age 75 to 80. Uh, so ours will go to the life of the policy. And again, the last line, must be sold with the initial application and cannot be added later. All right, the dependent child rider. Everything applies to all three classes, whether it's preferred, standard, or modified. Uh, so the death benefit provides full face amount coverage from day one on the child rider. Uh, did just have a question, who is beneficiary of the child rider? And that is a good question. Uh, it is the, the owner of the policy. Premiums, they're, the annual premium is $15 per thousand. So if you, you can go up to 10,000. So if you add 10,000, that's 15 times 10 throughout the course of the year. And then you use our multiplier based on the mode that they're paying. In most cases, if they're choosing EFT, uh, I'm just gonna do the math here real quick on calculator. That would add about $12.75 if you add $10,000 to that. And that is for all children that are dependent between the age of 30 days and age 17 at the time of application. So the minimum rider is 1,000. The maximum is either 10,000 or the face amount of the policy. So if someone chooses a $7,000 policy, the max child rider can be 7,000. Expiration of the child rider. Coverage expires at age 25, end of the payment plan or base insured 65th birthday, whichever comes first. All right, just had a question on the child rider. Is the child rider only coverage for the child or the insured, not the grandchild? That is correct. We do not cover grandchildren. Now, if there's a grandparent that has taken legal custody and has a documentation for that, that's fine. We can do it that way, but we would need uh, documentation. Coverage is extended to each child born to or legally adopted by the insured after the date of application for this rider if such child becomes 30 days old and if adopted, such adopted child was under the age of 18 at the time of application. So in a nutshell, what it's saying, any newborn child, once they reach 30 days of age, will be added. Anyone legally adopted uh, will be added. Again, same as with this, as the accidental death benefit or rider, it needs to be sold at the time of application. Uh, child cannot be the grandchild unless they have been legally adopted and the insured fits within our, our age range of being under 65 years of age. Cannot be added later. Coverage may be on two applications, i.e. coverage with both mother's and father's application, but not to exceed 10,000 per child. So in that scenario, let's 
say a mom and dad takes out five thousand dollar policy each on them, then they can take out five thousand each, uh, or add a child rider for a total of ten thousand for each child. Now, if someone, if a husband and wife takes out ten thousand dollar policy on themselves and want to add a child rider on each policy, the max they can take out is five on each policy for a total of ten. Uh, someone just asked, what if you get married uh, about stepchildren? Uh, I'm have to get back with you. My first thought is that you need to be legally legally adopted. Step stepchildren are not a, a dependent. Mm. Let me get back to you on that one, David. Uh, that's a good question. I was trying to think through that out loud. So let me get back with you on that. So that's everything on that page. Next question is child rider convertible and no it is not. They will need to be able to take out their own policy down the road. All right, let's talk about some of the underwriting changes that happened January 1st. And while I'm thinking about it, yes, you can use the old applications that you have. We will be fading them out over time. Any new applications that you order or download from our website will be the new applications. The old ones have been removed. They will be underwritten whether you're using the old or new via the new rules. Uh, so not, some nice changes that we've made. Bipolar has been removed from the app, which means that can now be preferred. It was graded or modified in the past, but if bipolar is the only issue, it can now be preferred. That's a nice change for us. We've removed the question on the second page where it would have made it graded or modified regarding past life insurance declines or rate ups. Uh, that question is off the app. Another nice change for us. We added the child rider that we've already talked about. We've added the accidental death benefit. The biggest thing that we did with the application is we updated and clarified several health questions. We were already underwriting most of these things the way we're I'm getting ready to illustrate them. Uh, we added a question to the agent statement regarding relation to agent. So if you're seeing someone or writing an app on someone that is related to you, uh, check that yes, which means commissions are going to be paid as earned in all cases on that. Again, we will set the old and new apps will be accepted. They will be underwritten via the new guidelines. And those guidelines went into effect January 1, 2018. Let's go over a few uninsurable conditions. And again, most of these were already included the way we were underwriting. We just added them to the app. Uh, confinement within 30 days, that means hospital, nursing home, convalescent home, uh, anything like that where they are confined due to their health. Uh, if they cannot perform ADLs, such as eating, dressing, bathing, uh, without help. Alzheimer's was on the app. We've been underwriting dementia as a decline for several months. It has now been clarified on the app. It is a knockout. Dialysis treatment, same way as dementia, uh, it's on the app now. ALS has always been a knockout. Sickle cells, anemia has always been a knockout. That's now on the app. Seizure within the past 30 days. So if you're seeing someone with a seizure that's, say, was 20 days ago, and everything seems to be fine, my recommendation to you, instead of writing a modified plan, go back and see them after the 30-day mark. Make sure everything's okay. Write the app at that point. Second column, cancer within 90 days is a knockout. It's a kind of same scenario that I just went over with the seizure with 30 days. You're seeing someone has cancer. Uh, and what we're saying with cancer within 90 days is cancer treatment, a diagnosis of cancer. Basically what they need to be is cancer free for 90 days and without treatment. So cancer free for 90 days and cancer treatment free for 90 days. Uh, cirrhosis of the liver, that is a knockout. Cystic fibrosis, uh, 
Uh, hepatitis C is a knockout. Brain aneurysm, AIDS, HIV, organ transplants. So if they've ever had an organ transplant, that's something that, that is a decline with us. Uh, had a few questions. Just I'll address them as we go here. Just for beneficiaries, is the address and telephone required? On the old application, it's not. It's not required. It is extremely helpful. If we have a death claim that may come in from a funeral home, but it has someone else's listed beneficiary, and that beneficiary hasn't contacted us, that just helps us get in touch with them. Really, the more information you can add, date of birth, social, any of that information that you could add along with the beneficiary information, it just helps us identify that person that much quicker and get the funds in their hand that much quicker. Uh, next question is, can we get these slides? If you will email me afterwards, I'll be happy to, to send them to you. Uh, so yes, we can do that. What constitutes family for controlled business? Uh, immediate family, uh, mom, dad, brother, sister, children. Uh, that's what constitutes controlled business. Is there a time frame on the organ transplant, 10 or 15 years? Uh, the question asked uh, ever. So uh, if they've ever had an organ transplant, it will be a decline. So I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint real quick, and I'm going to pull up uh, our new application. Make it just a little bit larger. And I'm just going to go through this in, in detail, line by line. Uh, hope that is readable for you, but again, make sure you're using a simple security plan on the top. It, it will say that. Uh, if you, any reason you ever need to mail an app to the office, you, maybe you took a direct bill app and receipt, took a premium, uh, mail it to the address on top and put attention new business. And the phone number is always on the top of the app. So if you ever need to contact new business, underwriting for any reason, you're out in the field and don't have the number, it's on top of the application. Uh, so name a proposed insured, we just need their full name, their gender, date of birth. Double check, make sure they're, if someone tells you they're 50 years old, but their date of birth says that they're 51, just go back and verify, make sure you're checking IDs, uh, need their height and weight, make sure to check their height and weight against our underwriting guide. Uh, we do have a height and weight chart. Put their mailing address. Uh, Street, city, state, zip. Please be very detailed there. Include a phone number. We always need a phone number. We will not issue a policy without a phone number. And we need a social security number or a TIN. So if you're selling uh, to someone who doesn't have a social but they do have a TIN number, we can take that. Uh, if the owner is different than the insured, the next section is where you include that information, name, address, social, or not social, but a relationship and phone number. Uh, same thing with the payor. If the payor is different than the insured or the owner, uh, include that information there. Primary beneficiary and contingent beneficiary. Uh, as asked earlier, it's always helpful to get an address. I would even go as far as putting the date of birth or, or social on there if you have either one. It just helps identify that person. We can get the death benefit paid that much quicker. If you need more than one beneficiary on it, you can either write small and get it in here and just put slash or make two columns, or you can attach a second piece of paper. If you attach anything, any separate or additional pieces of paper, make sure to have uh, the insured and owner sign them. So moving on down, under the plan where it says simple security plan, preferred, standard, or modified. The modified is a two-year ROP, stands for return of premium. Uh, so check the plan that you're applying for, and I would make sure to go through and ask all the health questions and height and weight and tobacco questions, look at their medication before you check a plan here. 
I would fill out the rest of the app and then actually come back to this unless you've already have that information. Uh, premium EFT, electronic funds transfer. We also accept direct monthly debit credit card. So what you need to do on the premium payable, think of this as two separate lines, EFT, monthly bill, a direct monthly bill and then debit credit card, that's one line. And then monthly, quarterly, semi-annual or annually is the second line. So something on each line and I, I failed to check it there. So uh, monthly, EFT monthly is what we're selecting here. On the face amount, we're doing a $15,000 face amount. The premium is $56.48. And that does include a $15,000 accidental death benefit rider and a $10,000 child rider. Uh, this main insured was 50 years old, so he qualifies for that child rider. The next question says, please choose a billing option, select month and select billing day or, or billing week. We have a question inserted here. Does the proposed insured receive Social Security, Social Security Disability, SSI, VA retirement, and or VA disability? By checking yes, that that helps us determine and do what we call Social Security billing correctly. So if a holiday falls on a typical pay date, we will draft the previous business day, same thing on a weekend. So by checking that yes, we don't need the separate form. This tells us that yes, without a doubt, this person is receiving funds from our federal government, which we can uh, draft accordingly. The next question on the left, draft upon approval. What that means is if you select yes in this, we will draft immediately after we underwrite it and it is approved. If we underwrite it and it is declined or need more questions, we're not going to draft immediately. We don't draft until it goes through underwriting. Then moving to the right, select first billing month, January through December. In this case, I selected February. The first billing day, first of the 28th, I left it blank or second, third, or fourth Wednesday. I do, all you have to do is the check mark on that second, third, or fourth Wednesday now. In this case, I chose the second Wednesday. Uh, so utilize that second, third, fourth Wednesday. This is a underutilized feature that we have. It is a good feature. Uh, we won't draft early. Just double check, make sure that they're getting paid on the on a Wednesday. And if so, select that Wednesday as the uh, pay date. Uh, had a few questions. I'm going to jump back into those as we go along. Um, how would you do multiple beneficiaries on an e-app? Uh, on the e-app, you can just click enter in that section and it will it will allow you to put several beneficiaries in, in there if you want to. If you do select more than one, make sure to put the percentage uh, that each one receives. So just use your enter button after you enter uh, or select their name. It can allow you to, to enter multiple names. Um, someone's asking about riders in Florida. Florida and the state of California uh, is still using our old app. We don't have new apps there yet. Uh, they will be coming, which means the riders are not available in Florida or California at this time. So sorry about that for you California and Florida agents that will be coming in the future. Uh, when we file these products, we went we can go to one place now and get most states approved going to one place. Florida and California are not part of that association, so we have to go to them individually, and we will be doing that soon. Uh, question, what time of day on the Wednesday Social Security billing date do you draft? We draft uh, early in the morning. Uh, there's not a specified time that any company can, can specify on drafting. Uh, we, when we send it to the Federal Reserve, then the Federal Reserve distributes it out to the individual banks. And I can tell you that is done in the early wee hours of the morning. Uh, must owner have an insurable interest insured? Yes. 
Yes, there must be an insurable interest there. Uh, can spouse sign and answer health questions for husband? No. And I'm glad you asked that. If whoever you're writing the app on, you need to be asking that person the health questions and that person needs to sign. Uh, so no asking husbands about wives, no asking wives about husbands uh, or anything else or mom about children unless they're dependent minors. Uh, so anyone of legal age, we need to be seeing that person in person and they need to be signing their own app. So uh, appreciate that question. If the payor is different on the social security question, does that have to be answered yes or no? Yeah, that, that question is actually regarding the, the payor. So uh, appreciate you asking that. How does the SNL billing day correlate with calendar earning dates? This sounds confusing. The first of the month always varies. Well, the first of the month will always be the first of the month. But let, let's take your example. If someone's pay date is the first of the month and their draft date is the first of the month, but that's a holiday like January 1st, uh, we will bill the previous business day. So we will draft on that previous business day. And I believe that's what you're asking. If not, please clarify. Uh, it says, did I understand correctly that e-apps are approved or disapproved on the spot while we are with the client? Yes, that is the big advantage to our e-app or web app, as we call it. You can get an underwriting decision while you're sitting right then and there with the client. Again. You need to be sitting there with them on the spot in person. Um, they need to type in their name as a signature, and I'm going to be going over a web app in one of our upcoming webinars in more detail. Uh, next question is, why second Wednesday? Um, if you don't understand how the second, third, fourth Wednesdays work, please get with your manager. Uh, it is an important issue, and, and I'll just give you an example. This person's birthday is the first of the year. I mean, the first of the month. So if this person is receiving Social Security or Social Security disability or anything like that, just based off their birthday, we know that they get paid on the second Wednesday of the month, which means you can we can draft on the second Wednesday. What we see a lot of agents doing is selecting the, the 14th or 15th of the month, but sometimes uh, second Wednesday might be the eighth of the month, and it could be the ninth of the month, could be the tenth of the month, could be anywhere uh, from the eighth through the fourteenth. Uh, so, if on those cases where it's the eighth of the month, but you chose the fourteenth or fifteenth of the month, you've got six, seven days there that you're letting slide by that we're not drafting that the money is sitting in that account. Uh, so use the Wednesday drafting feature. It, it should keep more policies in force by having fewer chargebacks, which means it's going to keep more money in your pockets. So again, if you don't understand that, please give it to your manager or myself, and we'll, we'll explain that to you. Moving on here, um, next thing on the applications, replacement questions. Uh, moving forward for most states, and whatever state you're in, if you know the rules and regulations, we're, we're going to be sending out these rules and regulations when we compile them all. But if you're seeing someone that has insurance, whether you're replacing or not, most states require that you fill out a replacement form. Uh, we haven't been abiding by that. We will be in the near future, and we'll be sending out those. But uh, if you already know that's the case in your state, please fill out the replacement form and send it in. We do need the insured information the insured physician's name and contact information. The only reason we need that is, is if there is a death claim in the first two years, that way we can go pull medical records and just make sure everything's legitimate and do it in a timely manner and get it paid if it is. Tobacco question. We did add nicotine to the question. So have you used tobacco and or nicotine in any form within the last 12 months? I think it's pretty straightforward. And I think most of our 
questions in one through seven, which is our knockout section, I think is pretty straightforward. Uh, number one, are you now or within the past 30 days been treated or admitted to a hospital, nursing home, health care facility, long-term care facility, hospice care, or been advised by a licensed member of the medical profession to be confined to a bed? Have you been medically diagnosed, tested, or treated by a licensed member of the medical profession with having a terminal illness resulting in death within the next 12 months? I think it's pretty straightforward. If anybody has any questions, uh, please fire away. And did have one come up on the tobacco question. Is nicotine considered pot uh, as far as marijuana is concerned? Uh, we don't underwrite anyone that's using drugs. If they're using marijuana, it needs to be a decline. Uh, some people have not seen a doctor in the last two years or have a doctor. Uh, would you just list as NA? Yes. Now, if they have someone that they've uh, seen, whether it's two years ago or, or three years ago or five or six years ago, please please put that information down. Uh, don't. Hey, on the e-app, he's asking if we need internet service or not. Yes, you must have internet service. It is internet based. That's that's how we're able to get you a underwriting decision at the point of sale. Uh, so moving on to health question number two. Within the past 30 days, have you been medically diagnosed, tested, or treated in a hospital? by a licensed member of the medical profession for a seizure. That's strictly asking for seizures within 30 days. Number three, do you need assistance or supervision with ADLs? That's dressing, eating, personal hygiene, transferring to or from a better chair. Number four, are you now or within the past 90 days been diagnosed, tested, or treated by a licensed member of the medical profession for any type of tumors or cancers except basal cell skin cancer. Number five, have you ever been diagnosed, have you ever been diagnosed by a licensed member of the medical profession as having Alzheimer's, dementia, ALS, sickle cell anemia, hepatitis C, cirrhosis of the liver, cystic fibrosis, brain aneurysm, or organ transplant? So someone asked about organ transplant earlier. Um, it, that is a, a knockout ever. Number six, are you currently receiving dialysis? Uh, number seven, have you ever been diagnosed by a member of the medical profession for AIDS or HIV? So those are our knockout questions, pretty straightforward. The only other thing that would knock them out would be height and weight, so make sure to check that. Okay, someone just asked a question, the one that gets me, uh, they say is that they had a heart attack three years ago. They're taking maintenance meds. How do I answer this correctly? All right, I'm gonna cover that in just a second. So moving on to the question, or section two of our questions, we'll say if you notice on top of the applications on page two, three, and four, we now ask for the applicant's name and social security, that's just, in case you fax pages to us or upload pages and they get separated for any reason, we can get them back together. Um, so medical question section two, this is strictly asking about insulin for diabetes. If they are taking insulin, check yes. And then we ask how many units per day. The reason we ask how many units per day is on down in question 15. If they take more than 100 units of insulin in a 24 hour period, they need to be modified or if they started taking insulin before the age of 40, it will also be modified. Uh, so moving on to section three of the questions, this is what's going to determine whether it goes uh, from a preferred or standard to a modified based on these questions and the medications are taken. So all these questions are within the last two years Angioplasty, I'm, I'm reading number nine, angioplasty, stent implant, bypass surgery, heart valve surgery, or pacemaker. Number 10, any type of tumors or cancers except basal cell skin cancer. So this question is asking in the last two years. The question in the knockout section was asking about cancers within the last 90 days. 
So basically, if they had cancer between day 91 and the end of year two, it would need to be a modified plant. So I hope you understand the difference there. So if you answered 10 yes, if now cancer-free, indicate the month and year that they were diagnosed by a member of the medical profession. There's a spot out there to the right to do it. Number 11, brain tumor, brain disorders, TIA, which is a mini stroke or strokes of any kind. Again, that's within the last two years. Number 12, heart disease of any type, angina, heart attack, enlarged heart, congestive heart failure, which is abbreviated CHF in many cases, circulatory disorder or other heart disorders or conditions. Number 13, lung disease, emphysema, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is COPD or any other type of pulmonary or lung disease or condition. 14, kidney disease or failure, renal failure or insufficiency, liver disease, hepatitis B, disease of the pancreas or any other organ failure or disease. 15, diabetes with complications that could include diabetic coma, insulin shock, eye disease or disorder, neuropathy, amputation, hospitalized for diabetes, take 100 units or more of insulin within a 24-hour period or insulin use prior to the age of 40. So if someone started taking insulin at say age 30 and now they're 60 and you're taking a nap on them, uh, 15 would need to be answered yes in that scenario I just described. 16, Parkinson's disease, paralysis, multiple sclerosis, lupus, muscular dystrophy, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, seizures, or any other neurological disorders. 17, paranoia, schizophrenia, major depressive disorder that includes suicide attempts, hospitalization, or any other mental disorder or disease. We get asked a lot what does major depressive order mean. So that's, we did include, that includes suicide attempts, hospitalization, or any other mental disorder. 18, have you been advised by a licensed medical, medical professional to have test, surgery, treatment, or do you have any medical test results pending or any other additional medical evaluations that have not been performed, excluding tests for HIV? That's basically, have you uh, had a stress test but maybe don't have the results yet? Have you had chest pains and you've gone to the doctor and waiting results? Uh, have you had a biopsy, waiting results, stuff like that's what we're looking for there. 19 is basically uh, alcohol or drug abuse that would be modified. Do you use a medical appliance, number 20, do you use a medical appliance such as a wheelchair, walker, hospital bed, or oxygen? Um, if they just need a motorized scooter or wheelchair or something like that because they go to a large uh, store like Walmart, Sam's, Costco, something like that, and they don't need it around the house, you can answer that no. But if they need it routinely around the house, that's when it gets checked yes. The section below, if yes to any medical questions, please indicate which medical question your answer pertains to and write down all medical conditions, medications, including oxygen, the dosage and duration of said medications. So this is where you include all the medications that they're taking and more information regarding any yes answer to the above questions. And the best thing to do here, in my opinion, is just ask them to bring you their medications. I uh, just had a question come up on number 10. said, if you answered question 10 as yes, and the modified plan is written, can the insured reapply for a preferred plan at a later date beyond two years cancer-free? Uh, and, and the answer is no. Whatever plan they start with is, is, is what they need to keep. And typically speaking, our graded or modified rates are so good that two or three years down the road, number one, you're going to start their contestability period all over again if you do that. And number two, they may not really be getting any better rate. At the bottom of page two is where you include information about applying for the child rider. You, you do need to include the children. And if you need more space, just add a separate page and, and have the owner and the insured as well as the agent sign it. Uh, but the questions are relating to all these conditions of, of one through 14 here. 
In page three, the na applicant's name and social security at the top. And again, that's just for clarification and make sure all pages are together. Disclosures for the prescription or RX search that we do. Um, signatures, city and date, city and state, and then date the application. Uh, if the insured is their own owner and own payor, then you just need the insurer's name. And if, if there's a different owner, we'd need the owner to sign as well. Make sure to answer the agent's statements. There are two questions here. Number four is, is the proposed insured an immediate family member? An immediate family member, again, is mother, father, brother, sister, or son or daughter. And number six, this insurance will or will not replace or change. Again, most states now requiring if you're writing a policy on someone that has insurance, whether you're replacing or not, they need to fill out the replacement form and submit it with the application. Uh, so we'll be coming out with those guidelines, exactly what states require and which states don't. But if you know in your state, please uh, go ahead and abide by that. Moving on to page four, again, the applicant's name and social security at the top. This is strictly the EFT form. We have included the payor information on the EFT form, which is going to make it a lot simpler. And so um, just complete that and get it to us. And someone asked earlier about uh, maintenance medications. It's going to do, a, I just, on the screen here, I'm, not, I'm now showing our medication list. I'm just going to pull up a search for Plavix. And this is a common one that, that we see. And in our underwriting guideline, blood thinners is, is, is the biggest gray area, I guess you would say. So Plavix, right here, I'm going to try to highlight this. It, uh, it highlights everything for me. But it's a blood thinner. The first or the second column, it says if they've been taking that for less than or equal to two years, then it's going to be modified. And this is a typo right here. This should say two plus instead of three plus. We're, we're going to get this corrected. But if they've been taking that for more than two years, it can be a preferred plan. Again, assuming there's no other issues, no other ongoing heart or circulatory issue. Uh, so I hope that answers your, your, your questions about maintenance meds. Um, someone's asking, what is the difference in the payor or, or, or customer? Is there, okay. Payor is the person paying the premiums. Whose bank account is it coming out of? And customer name is the insured. So uh, we might need to clarify that. The customer name is, is the insured. Uh, let's see, what other questions do we have? On the EFT form, if the insured and payor are one and the same, does the payor info need to be completed? No, it doesn't. Um, question, can you do a live online rate quote? I'll do that at the very end. Uh, so yes, I can do that. With that said, I will jump out of this. Someone did ask me to do a quote using our rate calculator. And let me pull that over. So if you want to hang around for that, feel free to do so. When you go into the quote, it's going to have the final expense and you're going to see this plus sign. Click the plus sign. And then you're going to see our different plans, MIB, Security Care Plan. SSP stands for Simple Security Plan. So we've broken these down for preferred, standard, or graded. And then the eye care at the bottom. Let's just it didn't tell me what you wanted, so I'm just going to do a per simple security plan preferred. Let's do a 65-year-old, $10,000 face amount, female. WAL stands for whole life. 
So you'll always check the whole life. Now, smoker, non-smoker, that means tobacco or non-tobacco. Uh, so let's just non-smoker. I'm going to leave the child rider and the accidental death benefit unchecked, and we'll come back to it. So all I'll do is at this point, click Calculate. $10,000 face amount, $865, $44.99 is the EFT premium. If you need any other premiums, click the plus sign beside the premium layout, and we'll give you the annual, semi-annual, quarterly, as well as credit card. So I'm just going to hit the back button. Now I'm going to go back and add a child rider, and I'm just going to do $10,000. And we'll click calculate. So 57.74. Oh, I was hoping that would save it. I'm going to put in a 66 year old female at 10,000 with the child rider. And if you notice, it says rider amount not valid. And what's not valid here, it gave us an error, is the person, the insurer needs to be age 65 or younger to take out the child rider. So I wanted to demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to go back to age 65. Uh, I'm going to remove the child rider and I'm going to put an accidental rider on there. Since the face amount is 10,000, we can go up to 10,000. So if you remember a while ago, it's 44.99 per month with the uh, just a base policy of 10,000. Now you add the accidental death benefit rider of 10,000. It increased it to 46.69. So $1.70 that it increased it to get that $10,000. I think it's well worth it in most cases there. Uh, so that's how you use the, uh, the rate calculator online. So I hope that helped. If you need any more information on that, uh, please let me know. Guys, I hope you got something good out of this webinar slash video. If you need basic training, remember, go ahead and click on that link that's popping up right now called Basic Training. It's going to play a bunch of videos for you that are going to cover all the basics. Also, if you're interested in finding out about our sales program, which includes some of the highest commission levels, the best leads, and yours truly as your personal trainer for final expense sales, Email me at Doug at UFESonline.com. Happy hunting.